two, one. All right. Should I just tell y'all when to start time? Yeah, count on whenever. Okay. Let me make sure everything's not exploding real quick. All right, so. Is this the game music? Yeah. Okay, so you're not a weeaboo. Then count. No. Whatever. No. All right, this is Chrome Squad. It's a tactical RPG inspired by Power Rangers. And then we choose casual because it's uh, the easiest difficulty and the fastest. Alright, you ready on time? Yep. Alright, three, two, one, go. I'm gonna hold enter because it speeds up cutscenes. Now I'm gonna skip the tutorial. And then we have actors to choose from. So, what we're pretty much gonna do is choose the actors that grant us the most damage. Because uh, what that does is it allows us to uh, beat turns really easy. That's not good. Okay, I'll have to go to the equipped. Let's go right here. Just take a little time loss. Alright, so now we're in the first episode. There's four types of episodes. There are objectives, there's set enemies, set turns, and boss fight. This is a set turn fight. We have to kill all the enemies on the screen. The routing that kind of goes in in this game is to have the least number of turns as possible. And we pretty much optimize that by trying to kill as many enemies in one turn as we can. And so here it's just basic. We're going to attack them one by one. Uh, that's the chromatize button. What it does is it groups all of our actors around one person. And it also gives them access to their skills and their weapons. And those are helpful. Uh, we need to get to a boss in this next fight. And the way we're going to do it is using the chromatize property where it groups, them, groups us together. So it gets all of us over there and um, acrobatics so if I just move scout over here and teamwork I can use acrobatics and get assault all the way over here now I can chromatize gather everyone around don't worry we only see this once and I'll finish off this boss with a uh, sword attack Now this is the audience report screen, as you see we get dropped crafting items, money that we either gain or we can lose it, and uh, fans. And so, just answer an email, and what we could actually do with those audience reports is cancel them, and that's just done by pressing escape uh, anywhere in it, and that saves around 10 seconds just canceling that. We don't do it on every single one because we need the money for mechas for a mecha fight later in the run. But uh, it saves a lot of time over the course of the run. Why that's also useful is because uh, it doesn't flag if you get that money at the end or the fans. So. If we happen to lose money at the end of an episode, we um, it won't flag that we actually lost that money, and so we'll have more money than we would have if we would have watched the audience report.
Now you could just press escape like that and go right into the next episode. Um, this episode is the first one you'll see Eagle Lasso. Like uh, Chromatize and a skill that uh, Lead will get later in the run. Uh, we want to get the bot. We want to get all our team members around the boss or the boss around us. And what Eagle Lasso does is it'll take any enemy in the, in its range and it'll pull it towards Lead. And so that could help us get that boss really close to us and have us do a teamwork attack on it. And we're going to skip uh, this audience report as well. Now this is the first episode uh, where you'll see the use of multi-shot. And what multi-shot is, it's a skill on Techie. And Techie's the blue one right here. And what it does is, it's an AoE attack that deals 70% of his weapon damage to all the enemies around him. And as I said earlier, we want to try and attack as many enemies on one turn as possible. And this is one way we do it. And so, if we're able to attack like a ton of enemies, which you'll see on the next turn, it'll save us a lot of time by just rather than just attacking them one by one. And so since an enemy dodged, I'm going to have to attack another one to get my chromatized meter up. Scoot back one so these don't go away. That's a lot of people in range, which is really nice. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to get him in one turn, but that's fine. Okay, I'll just get it with uh, assist. And so, probably haven't said this, but uh, that's annoying. Probably haven't said this, but uh, yellow is scout, black is assault, red is lead, blue is techie, and pink is assist. That's what I'll refer to as them for the rest of the run. Um, here at this point, we're going to get this random guy. We don't need him. And just finish this boss off with a three-person teamwork attack. Alright, so what we're going to do is change Techie's multi-shot skill, which you just saw, to um, uh, Find Weakness. And what Find Weakness does is it takes any enemy on the screen and it makes their uh, it makes them take 30% more damage. And so what you could do is multiply uh, the damage that you do to any enemy by 1.3, and that's how much damage you'll actually do. That's really helpful on boss fights, because it allows us to do more damage on a single turn, again, minimizing the number of turns. Uh, right here we're going to use uh, a skill of Assault, known as Strong Arm, to fling all of our people around this boss right here, and just finish it off with a teamwork attack. Now, one of the setbacks of having fine weakness is we don't have multi-shot, and if we did have multi-shot, we would have been able to do this one whole fight in one turn, because we could just use techie skill. However, we can't do that. But, it's optimized to the point where we could do it in a really fast two turn. All we have is one enemy. All 
Alright, um, on this next turn, instead of flinging everyone towards the boss, because uh, we can't fling them far enough to where they can attack them on one turn, we're gonna actually teamwork with all of, all of our squad, and um, he'll teleport towards us. Saves on a lot of movement, and the chance that one of them could get stunned. Okay. So now I gotta move first with Techie, because I gotta get all my sword people around him. Make sure I use my pistol and now I'm gonna do a full team attack. Whenever I don't need to do this, I'm not because this animation takes a little while. And now I can just finish him off uh, with a three-person teamwork attack. Alright, next is the mecha fight. Um, some really basic thing about a mecha. So, Later in the run, they're going to be really interesting, but right now they're really just going to be attack fests where I just spam attack. Uh, good. Okay, it's not a perfect fight. The perfect fight would have been I hit six in a row, get through his first two health bars, and then use our special attack, which is right here. And there we go. I'll explain more about those later. I'm going to skip this cutscene by just aborting the episode because for some reason that works. Alright, now I'm going to buy knuckle gloves for all my squad. Gotta be careful that I don't press too hard. Next time we double tap, get lead a broom, and then skills, change that back to multi shot, make her spear do more damage, and give him more range. That's actually good. I can now switch Techie's weapon to a rifle, which does more damage. Alright. So, now we're into set turn fights. These are probably the most annoying part of the game, and what we're gonna do is just teamwork with all of our team members. Now, what we could do on these fights is attack them one by one but they end up respawning at the end of each turn and the animation it takes for us to attack them uh, for the remaining enemies to attack us and for the enemies that we killed to respawn is actually longer than if we were to teamwork and have them attack us that changes that changes later in the run when uh, we can kill multiple enemies in one turn using like AOE attacks like multi-shot or uh, stuff with assault or scout later in the run because if we can kill multiple enemies with a single attack then having them respawn and having you attack is actually faster than just team working and having them attack you but that's not used right now There's a... I don't want to get too in-depth in this. But there's a skip in this game called AI Turn Skip. And what it is, is... There's a way you can manipulate the AI on one side of the map. And then you can move like some of your squad to the other side and have half of them over here die. And for whatever reason, it just skips the remaining enemies' turns, and I can just teamwork with my team members, and it'll keep on skipping it, and it saves a lot of time on these fights. However, there's no way to get it to work in casual mode, or casual difficulty.
now we're done with that uh, next is just a uh, set enemy fight that's pretty kind of cool how it, we optimize it so I'm just gonna go down here and chromatize and so spear has a wider range we're not gonna use that right now but rather than swords it has two out range rather than one that's somewhat helpful because it saves on movement Here, use one of the salt's AoE skills. Going to come up here and use the distance on my pistol to kill that. So next turn, I can attack this enemy with assist. I'm just gonna put it over here, eagle lasso, lasso him over, and then just do a sword attack. Alright. So in this next episode is the first place you'll see uh, early chromatizing in the run, and so having access to our skills is really useful, because if on the first turn we have access, uh, we're able to We're able to um, kill, do a lot more on the first turn than we normally would, and so the first way we're going to do that in this fight is just by attacking him. And so there's going to be an enemy behind Techie that I'm going to attack, and that'll give us enough fans to reach this. Uh, there's this yellow arrow at the Chrome Squad gauge at the top, and if it reaches that, it, it allows us to chromatize. just enough so I can come over here chromatize and now just finish uh, this thing off with a sword attack this is kind of the first like optimization of mecha fights as usual we don't want to um we, we don't want enemy turns, and so how we do that is if you finish a mech fight and finish off one of the th three health bars, it goes right to the next one and lets you attack more. And so if we could just finish off the first one or first two health bars, that gets us right to the third health bar without him even having to attack. Alright. So we're going to skip this one. Uh, now we're going to hire the green team so we can get a drop in this next episode. So we want a polyester drop. And the reason we want a polyester drop is because if you've noticed, Techie's movement range is sucky. And what, the, what polyester allows us to do is uh, craft an item called the Speedy in Season 3. That's not good. Hopefully I can get here. Alright, now I just gotta hope. Alright, that's not good so far. So, I need a polyester drop here. It's not necessary. There's other spots where I could get it. But it would be really fast if I just get it here. Don't worry, there's there's backup strats. Like major backup strats that I came up with this morning. So 
So, good news about this, I will gain a lot of money. Alright, we're on the sun. It's just a ridiculously long episode. Please? Okay, so I dropped the leather. I think I have enough cotton. Okay, sh we should be fine. Even if one somehow does not drop. I'm just gonna teamwork. There's no point. It's not gonna drop. I have too many items anyway. Wasted a lot of time. Ah, uh, that could have been good. All right. Alright, so I'm gonna buy the hanger bow. Uh, the hanger bow increases the uh, range of uh, assist weapon, which is very useful. Uh, this is the first objective fight, we just need to kill these three portals. Crits would be preferable. Uh, use, again, Assault Strong Arm to fling lead over and attack it on the first turn. This double attack will kill it. That episode, now we're into the season finale. Okay. 
This is again another instance where we're going to use early chromatizing to help speed up this fight. We're really close, but if I just can attack it, yeah. Make sure I switch to lead, because if I accidentally chromatize with assault, uh, that could be irritating. With Techie up here, those aren't in multi shot range, but I could fling Assault over and use Square House Kit. And my bow just happens to be just in range of this weak Nutcracker, so I don't even have to move. So this fight um, is kind of just waiting. Fishmaid does not uh, move out until the third turn. And so what we need to do on these first few turns is just move as far right as we can. That's just what that's what that's what it even says in my notes. And since I can kill it with only three uh, members of my squad, I'm only, I'm only going to move three over. This teamwork with Techie and Assist. Okay, so he used Song of Charm on Scout. Uh, that doesn't let me move Scout for this one turn, but that's fine, because since Scout's ra uh, movement range is so far, I don't need to move him that far. I'm able to move him far enough in the first turn to where, since he can't move in the second turn, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, that's perfect. Teamwork with him, teamwork with Assault. Oh, no. Make sure I use my spear. And just finish him off. Now it's just the mecha fight. So again, we can just abort that last. So I'm going to change this to weapon expertise to make him deal more damage. This to weapon master to make her deal more damage. This to lightning dagger to give him a secondary attack. To buy the heavy axe. I already bought one. And I believe the designer rifle for Taki. Yes. All right. So this is the first time we see uh, Lord Gaga. Uh, he's a character in this game that comes up kind of frequently. Not, I don't really know the story. So this is a really cool fight. Um, we're going to use Techie at some point. 
Techie's multi-shot ability at some point. But we need to clear as many people as we can on this first uh, attack as... Yeah. So another thing with Techie, I'm trying to make him in as many teamwork attacks as possible because one of his uh, attributes is that he does 30 plus 30% 30 damage in teamwork attacks. Which is very helpful. Okay, so I should be able to... Bow. Okay. I, I don't even need to multi-shot. Don't dodge. Okay, good. All right, that's uh, Malevolous Plant. Really easy fight. All I need to do is just eagle ass on him with a uh, lead. And use Lightning Dagger. Deal some damage. Come over here. Do a weapon attack. That's not good. Um, so Tucky has a move called Sniper Cat, which uh, for every tile away it'll allow him to deal more damage. That was a backup strap by the way, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, here I just teamwork because it's set turn fight, but it'll be the first set turn fight where we actually can use AoE attacks. Which is very useful. So you see, this is kind of taking a little while. So if I could just kill multiple enemies in one turn with a single multi-shot attack, it would be significantly faster. Also, Scout has a move called uh, Stunning Pose, and what that does is it stuns all the enemies around him. That will also skip their turn, even though it doesn't kill them. And also means that they won't respawn. Uh, need to wait for a good opportunity to use it. Alright, so this should be a good time to use Stunning Pose, because I, I cannot kill uh, these two things with multi-shot. Multi shot on the next turn should kill at least four enemies. Teamwork, get done with this turn. 
and that's the first one we uh, can speed up. Uh, after this, I am going to buy one of my first mark. No, I'm going to buy uh, some marketing, and this is for twofold. Um, it's a company called Mass Communications, and what it does is there's one attribute on it that can give us that gives us uh, starting net fans for episodes and that can help with uh, early chromatizing another thing it can do is it here I'll show you all hire it for three episodes it'll give me three hundred dollars up an episode and plus four hundred starting audience the starting audience is good for early chromatizing because it puts our uh, meter up to a certain point to where we can and the extra money will help go towards the mecha now for the mecha we need cardboard and uh, the thing with cardboard it's really rare it doesn't drop much and especially wood board we need and so what we do is we get around twenty five hundred dollars and we buy a pack and what the pack does is uh, it gives you five random items and hopefully it will give us one wood board and five cardboard blocks box I may have to um, save and quit a couple times to actually get the right thing Uh, this is kind of a use of early chromatizing. Our meter isn't all the way there with the 400 fans we start with, so we still have to attack one person. Uh, you may think, oh, it may be quicker to attack an enemy really close to you. For some reason, that's not the case. If I attack this enemy, it actually gives me fans. I'm going to chromatize here. Uh, use my eagle lasso on the cupcake, because I'm barely in range teamwork and then use my axe all right so here's the really big uh, buying section we will be buying well hopefully I don't need to reset okay so crafting by packs this please please woodboard Okay, let me just see how many cardboard boxes I have. I do not have enough, so I need to quit out. Uh, in the beginning of the game, I made sure I had no saves, so this would be really quick to do. Okay, good. That's just, just enough. That's what we need. We need to craft another one. I have four polyester. I have two. Perfect. Craft leather. Craft polyester, go over here, craft the speedy, gives you plus two movement. Equip this to techie. Okay, uh, go to our mecha, buy the mega chat, oh, the mega chest, buy uh, the aerodynamic arm, and on the left arm, buy the mega mecha arm. And so this gives us finishing moves and one move call. Uh, this. Okay, so this gives us finishing moves. Uh, which are really helpful. So as I said earlier, uh, we want to uh, minimize the amount of enemy attacks on mecha fights. And one way to do that is get through the health bar. And so the finishing attacks are a really quick way to do that because they deal a lot of damage. And if you've noticed, um, there's a counter on the side. One is with accuracy, which resets after every health bar. And another one is uh, for uh, 
combo multiplier. So what it does is uh, it'll increase your combo every time you attack and that flurry strike which we got on one of the arms helps us do that really quickly. And so you'll see a series of attacks I'm going to do on the mecha in a second which uh, will be significantly faster. It says around 20 to 25 seconds if done perfectly. Alright, here we go. So, two attacks for a stripe bazooka. Okay. I gotta hope I get three attacks in a row. It's around a 50 50 chance on the second health bar that I get it. Uh, one, two. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, good. Now I just spam attack with this last health bar. That's perfect. That was a perfect fight. Okay, I'm gonna change Techie's multi shot back to find weakness for this fight. Because one of the bosses on this is very annoying. Alright, since money isn't really a big important factor now, we could skip more, um, what are they called? Uh, we could skip more of the audience report screens, uh, which again I said are around 10 seconds each. So this is going to be a, ma this is a major time save in the run. And just by the way, uh, using that mecha strat that I just showed you and the uh, uh, audience report skip, this is the first run that's ever used it. <laughs> Alright, so as I said earlier, Techie has a skill called uh, Sniper Cat, which for every tile away, he deals plus 8% damage. Uh, that just adds to more damage that we do. And in this one, it's especially useful because Woodman, if we do not use it, um, Woodman will die. Will not die and we'll have to go through one more turn. We go around them, teamwork. Okay, so I'm gonna go on up, use find weakness, tab, make sure that's in range, it is, and now I'm gonna use rifle to get my sniper cap damage, because you have to uh, use your rifle with techie in order to get that damage. And now we're going into another mecha. One, two, one, two, three. Is it a... Alright, so I don't change anything. Jeez, I saved a lot of time on that split. 
guess that was one of the bad ones. Four left, two up. Uh, this is join up. Uh, earlier, I talked about uh, how chromatize brings uh, all your squad around you. Uh, join up does the same thing. Five away is the max that you could uh, have sniper cat damage and then I could just finish off finish off uh, my levelless plant with scout this is the fastest season finale or not finish it off There we go. It's a really low percent chance to miss that. One, two, three. So now we're into some story cutscenes, well, cutscenes, some story parts, uh, I don't really know what Lord God does here, but he, like, kills all of our team members except, well, he kills, uh, lead, and then we have to kill him, but he has one health, <laughs> so that's really easy, and then he kills all the other ones, and then lead's revived, and now we need to kill three nutcrackers and in, I've had this once and this is while I was routing it it is possible to counter both of these and kill it oh no way no way oh it's kind of it's possible to counter both of these and get the whole fight done in one turn but that's that was really nice Except for that dodge just then, or that, that's really nice too. Okay. Now we're into Season 4, where we're going to begin beefing up Assault. Uh, explain why we're beefing up Assault in the next season, but... Right now, we're just going to buy a lot of weapons and uh, other such things for her. Um, shop. What do I buy? Scepter helmets for. Assault and scout change sword for assault battle axe for all right season four is where it becomes really just like a boss is one of the boss heavy seasons. Not as bad as season five, but okay. This is just another optimized turn. If this guy dodges, that could be okay. He has a really high percent chance to dodge. That guy, if lead hits a low roll, cannot die. That's all okay. Oh, 
polyester. Look at that. Okay, another one. So this one, even though there's all these enemies around, we're just gonna use chromatizing and acrobatics to, again, just get the boss. Simple as that. All right. No, please don't do what I think you'll do. Okay, good. <laughs> good. That could've been bad. Let's finish him off. We don't need the um, sniper cat damage on Techie, so uh, we used to move him out. That's not necessary anymore. So now I kind of got to abridge the these mecha strats because that range on the bazooka does not always hit. So if that happens, I just got to do one more attack at the end. I've never seen that before. Must have been a really low rolls on the first attacks. Ah. And so besides just like getting a bunch of damage under one turn, our base damage on our mecha is actually uh, a lot better uh, thanks to those upgrades. Um. I'm gonna hire Max Communications again to early chromatize. You get the samurai guy, and he's actually really pretty useful in this um, episode. We have this guy all the way over here, and using acrobatics and stuff won't get us anywhere near him but we can use we can get him just in range if we use this attack on the samurai as you see exactly four away from lead just allowing us to use eagle lasso really close. One, two, three. Next me episode is just two mecha fights, so that's fun. So cutscenes and mecha fights. That was a really slow fight, but that's okay.
Uh, here we get a lot of uh, money. It's like one of the last ones we'll see. Uh, gonna buy a spear for a lead. Um, so, there is a way to early chromatize with this, but it's not really, like, useful, because it takes a lot of time. It's actually slower to do an early chromatize and get this in one turn than it is to just do it down, just wait it down and do two. So here, we can, these people are just perfectly in range, so we could do a multi-shot. I think that should work. Yeah, you get all of them. Alright, so right now we're going to hire uh, conductors of the hype train. Uh, like Max Communications, they, um, we're hiring them for three episodes. Uh, they give us starting audience, but they give us uh, a lot of starting audience, a thousand. And that allows us to um, get through on these fights. And so this guy right here, Graveloid, was kind of the first idea. And so. It used to take a really inconsistent 3 fight and it turns it into a 100% consistent 1 turn. So just move down here with lead. Gotta do this very carefully. Okay. Use Eagle Lasso. Teamwork, Lightning Dagger. I need to get as much damage as I can in. And we don't need the uh, sniper cat damage as usual, so we could just uh, forego it. And now we get that done in one turn, rather than the old three turn. Okay. Oh my god. All right. All right. Now we're into pretty much another boss fight. Well, it is another boss fight. We gotta take attack this junk thing. Just gonna do the exact same thing. Deal as much damage as we can, and kill it with a teamwork attack. Again, we don't use this guy.
This guy has a really long animation for some reason. Okay, so after this fight, I'm going to be changing Techie um, Assault to a skill called uh, its Trample skill to a skill called its Cleave Time. And what that does is um, every enemy you attack, there's a 50 50 chance that when you attack them, it damages all the enemies uh, surrounding that enemy. And uh, that's very useful in set, in set turn fights where we could kill multiple enemies in one turn. Alright, so this is GCB. I'll explain it after I get it because I need to really focus on getting it. It's very important. This is the, one of the only glitches in the game. Okay, so what I have right now is... Okay, so this is a use for early chromatizing. So we could uh, use multi shot here and kill all of these in one turn. So what I have right now on Scout is this glitch chromatize button done by that sequence of events, and this is actually usable. So I can chromatize again, but what I could also do again is glitch chromatize, which gives me that button, and so infinitely I can glitch chromatize. But, another thing you could do with that is, every time you chromatize, your skills refresh. So in theory, and what we can do is uh, GCB, or Glitch Chromatize button, over and over, and essentially skill refresh all of our skills. And that includes Techie's Multi-Shot, and Assault's Cleave Time, or uh, Square House Kick. Which will let us uh, complete fight complete this fight, this fight very quick. So I'll kill these six enemies with one attack. The next turn should be really quick. Okay, maybe, okay. It's not activated. Then again, it is a 50-50 chance. Now, you could just be infinitely at the beginning of a turn. But I need to be really careful with how I do it. I may not, I may take the safe route and not, but nah. Okay, use it. Ah, that sucks. Alright, so after this turn, I'm gonna go for it. It's really easy. I just have to hit it before the movement tiles come up. I'm not going to do it the second time because I don't want to risk it. So, if you've noticed, uh, Scout has none of its skills active, but we can get them indirectly. So, if you've noticed how when you teamwork and attack an enemy, when you teamwork and attack an enemy, that's its cleave time, by the way. Um, with like a weapon, if uh, that person, if that team member's weapon is in range, it'll use that weapon too. And that works right now, because currently Scout's in this really weird phase where he's not entirely chromatized, but he has all of his skills.
Right. Hopefully it's clear final hit. Ah, that sucks. Alright, so I'm going to do a very specific I'm going to score refresh three times uh, two times on the next fight and get a three turn in so I'm not going to be talking much because I need to pay attention That's fine, that's okay. Um, that's bad. I was supposed to GCB there and I was not paying attention. <sighs> Hopefully I can kill him on this next turn. I hope. It's really unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Still playing a game. <laughs> I didn't expect to see you when you get awake. That's fine. Okay. Alright. See ya. You want to practice the one? No, I do. Okay. And so one simple attack should finish him off. Alright. <laughs> that was interesting. So, um, now we're going into Season 4, where we only have Assault, and I'll explain that when we get there. Facing up assault <laughs> uh, because uh, so we chose a route in that last episode that gives us uh, assault, that gives us the Carmen Rider route uh, in which we gain a lot of damage on assault. So essentially, we're gonna forego our um, our axe right here. Oh, that, that hit a really low roll. If we go our axe right here for some bike moves, that's that's good. And um, all the rider route moves from uh, this guy over here, Kanji Ab. And so, um, 
The reason we picked this route over the other ones is twofold. So the other two routes are Metal Hero and Tammy and Six Ranger. And that's when you don't kill Tammy, which was that first boss we killed in the last Gaga fight. And one thing about that is that was not necessary for me to kill it. Um, that was optional. And so killing it puts me in this uh, branch. And so rather than having six uh, individual team members, I now have one that I need to deal with. Other than that, um, there are no mecha fights in here, which saves time. Uh, and most of these are just uh, straight up boss fights. At least the majority of the episodes in this. And all the moves we get with Assault allow us to uh, complete the last battle really quickly. The last few battles. So on this next turn, um, the reason I bought some gloves earlier is because we get about Assault's critical up to about 50%. Uh, this guy is only vulnerable to teamwork attacks, so I need to hope I crit here, and I could hopefully get a crit kill on him. With my axe. That did a lot of damage. So it's not going to quick kill him, but it'll get really close. Unless Kanjiaba crits. Alright, so two teamwork attacks should finish him off. That's irritating. Oh, and there we go. Now we gain all of the Knight Rider skills, which are really, really good. Uh, I'm gonna change uh, Assault skill back to its cleave time because it'll become prevalent. Why that's really, why that's uh, really useful in this episode. So, what Dragon Mode does is it ups your damage, uh, and it. <laughs> Also makes it when you kill an enemy, they'll explode. Driver Kick is similar to Trample, in where you could use it and it'll kill all the enemies in your path. And uh, Time Gadget is a Time Gadget is a move where it'll store your position and all the enemies' positions on the screen uh, before the turn ends. And so after that turn. Uh, no matter where everyone's moved, uh, it'll put you back in that position. And that's really helpful. So there's a ton of enemies right here, and we need to kill them really quickly. And so I'm going to try and square house as many as I can, and hopefully, since uh, driver mode will make them explode, and this cleave time can make a fit, could do a 50-50. Let's see how this will work. 
it just chains and they all die. This should be a three turn. Nope. That's a really quick four turn anyway. Time gadget, we can use that. And square house kit, do a lot of damage. And so at the end of this turn, he's gonna come back to the same position he was when I use time gadget. So like critical, that's really, oh, that's really good. Now, um, uh, use agency to Earth Defense Squad, make contract, three episodes. Let's go. So I need to beef up the damage on Assault because now it's a lot of bosses that I need to do. And that's why I also beefed up the Critical because Critical damage is very helpful because it basically deals around two times the damage you deal in a normal turn. And so if I could just deal that, I could save a ton of turns on these boss fights. And so I kill him with the driver kick, but it doesn't tell I kill him until I teamwork. And so this turn I'm just going to use as many moves as I can to just deal damage on this guy. I just need to hope he doesn't pounce. Use a move called pounce, because what pounce does is it pretty, he pretty much darts in one direction. And the bad thing that could do is, I'm going to use that for safety. Bad thing that could do is he could somehow get out of my movement range, which is really bad. That's a nice crit. That was an amazing fight. One of the best fights I've ever seen on this. That's a big time save. This is a real challenge. I'm really just hoping I don't get a soft locked here. So I'll purposely not use driver mode so that if I happen to counter, people don't explode. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go over here, and then I'll show you a cool strat on the second turn. Okay, good. Didn't get soft locked. So I'm just going to use driver mode, and then score house kick, and then all of them die. So this next turn's really quick. <laughs> Have them respawn. And then it's my turn, so I'm just going to teamwork. And other than just attacking enemies when they're in clumps, 
because of uh, driver mode and it's cleave time, I'm not going to do much. See, stuff like that is just crazy. That's not good, because they're going to respawn at the end of their turn. I guess it does skip their movement, but... Oh well. Should be able to save a decent amount of time in the split because my PB I saw flopped, which happens randomly in the first move of this fight, which is at, which is better, but can also be really annoying. And also, this is the last set turn fight of the game, so huzzah! We did it. Alright, so if I crit here, that'd be pretty cool. Save one turn. Alright, so do that. Over here. Let me square house kick. I don't think it'll Yeah, it's never done it. This one attack here should kill him. Alright. Uh, next episode, we use a pretty cool strat. Um, so, like I was saying with... Uh, it's cleave time, there's a 50-50 chance that all enemies around me will get killed. So I'm going to teamwork here, have these enemies come toward me and surround me, and sur like and go near each other. So if I attack this middle one, there's a 50-50 chance that all the other ones will die, but it didn't happen. That's fine. Still a 3 turn regardless, because I countered. Uh, a really cool thing could happen in this fight. So... What I could do is he spawns these like pillar type things where like I don't know they're like spikes and I could attack him uh, hidden its cleave time and they'll explode because of driver mode and deal damage back to him so like that.
Alright. Alright, so this is the uh, simplest episode in the game. Uh, the split is really quick. You'll see. So all we really have to do is use driver mode. Go up here. Uh, attack this guy. And that's it. It's the only scene in this game. It has a really short cutscene. It has a useless crit. And we're done. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Change this trample, that's the last skill change in the entire game. And now we're on uh, the second last episode of the game. Okay, so, you try mode. One right, four back. Driver kick. Four left, one back. So I'm just going to use driver mode, driver kick, and trample just to go all over this field and attack all these guys. Uh, what could happen is I could counter this guy, and that would be crazy. But sadly, that did not happen. Here, again, I'm just going to use driver mode skills to get all over the map and use this person to attack all the enemies on my right. And these two guys are going to go up next to each other, so if I just attack them... Uh, they'll die because of um, driver mode buff. So money is like, perfect right now, so... Uh, after this fight, it's the last menu uh, where we buy stuff, and... I gotta do this that perfectly so uh, forgive me if I'm quiet hopefully I get a good range and don't have to attack with the other girl that's fine sadly we can't skip any more cutscenes but now we're on the last episode in the final in the whole game. All right. So Scepter helmet for lead, techie, and assist. So. Elite boots for scout, lead, and assist. And then scepter suits for that. Um, um, that. And I can buy one for techie. Uh, and on marketing, I add this 10 plus attack. Okay. So, this is the final attack. Uh, I upgraded the Inceptor Shoots to upgrade skill regen because that determines uh, how many, how often I can use my skills. Since we're already chromatized, we can't do GCB. 
and do skill refresh. So that is what we have to do instead. I'm going to start off with using Final Weakness with Techie. So that all the attacks we do in the second will deal more damage to Lord Gaga. Teamwork here. And now what I'm going to do with uh, Assault is kind of strange. I'm going to delay uh, its final attack until after all these guys have attacked. And so I can use a safety strat. Which doesn't waste much time. So, go here. That is just enough in the range to use my uh, spear on it. And so I could do that. That's not in the range. So I'm gonna move here. And now I could do a sword attack with all those guys. And now finish it off with a square house kick. So, a really cool thing about Rider Route, and I'm not sure about the other routes, but so one thing you're supposed to do in this room is defeat all of the enemies in uh, the back here and there's like also portals so they spawn it's impossible it it's really hard and I don't think it's possible to do it in one turn but for whatever reason in Rider Mount there's this door that you bust open after uh, I guess you complete this fight and so for whatever reason it just lets us straight up attack the door so rather than like actually doing this whole fight we can go straight to the store and completely skip the fight. I'm not sure if that's a sequence break or whatever, but it's pretty cool. Now we're on to the final fight of the game, uh, which has a pretty cool beginning. So what we used to do is have to get on this platform that Villain X is on. And that took several turns, and it was really RNG heavy, and it made it was really hard. Now... Villainess is gonna stand on right about like on like right there where he is right now. He's gonna stand there in the beginning of the fight. For whatever reason, we can use Eagle Lasso on him and bring him down to the floor. And I'm not sure why this works. I believe it's because of this corner at the stairs, but it does and it saves so much time. So I'm gonna do this really carefully. X then join up. Okay, finally this with Techie. Okay, teamwork. Use fine weakness with Techie. Three left, two up. And teamwork. I'm going to move assault one up, two right. Driver mode. I'm going to go a back and forth with driver kick and trample. And I'm not going to teamwork yet. Um, scout around it. Use lightning dagger. Teamwork. With Kanji Abu right here. Use driver mode to up his attack. Uh, use driver kick all the way up. Just teamwork with him. Go back to here. Use bow on phone X. So we do a full team attack. Now I'm going to time gadget to save Villain X's position because he will uh, uh, teleport all the way over here. And now we're on to the second turn. So what I need to do here is move lead in such a way so that I could use Eagle Lasso and Villain X, pull him towards lead, and have everyone else surround him. And that's going to be really simple, just right here. I'm gonna switch for Kanji Abu for a second and surround him. So I'll explain while the cutscene is going on. So when you do a five person team attack, just a regular attack, it still displays a cutscene. And or in order to skip this cutscene, uh, in order to skip an extra attack animation, I put Kanji Abu in before. So in this next turn, he's gonna transform to his final form, 
I'm going to do a really specific um, mo uh, movement with these people so I can get as much damage in as possible because some of them have their uh, weapon skills back. Where's the next team? Over on North Monax. Teamwork. Uh, use Lightning Dagger. Uh, teamwork. Assault. Use Trample. Two units. Uh, uh, okay. Techie. Teamwork. Um, shoot. That's okay. That's alright. That's fine. I was not supposed to uh, move with Assault just then. That wastes this turn, but that's okay. I could just kill him with Assault right here. Arliss, Scout. There we go. Okay, so that's the final boss. Uh, now we have the final mecha fight, which we're going to be doing different strats. So he's got so much health, and our accuracy bar goes down so quickly to where just straight up attacking won't do enough damage at all, and will and it keeps on getting reset. So like, I gotta just take a lot of damage here and just try and die as quick as possible because we can't beat this fight. Oh, I could get a sub 40 if I try really hard. Oh no, I died. Oh wait, what? I'm reviving and I have a 99999 a 999 hit percent chance 5 6 7 chroma beam. Yeah, so uh, time's coming up once the final text fades away. And so what happens is when you die, you get a audience boost and it gives you 994% accuracy that does not go down. So you can just infinitely hit him and beat the final boss. Okay, so... Alright, when this fades away, that's time. Time. Alright, that was a good one. Wait. Was this supposed to hit time? Oh shit. Yeah, that's fine. I have it. It was like a 140-13. This, this Skellicat guy was not in here. He should have been. Oh. What a guy. What a guy. Can you believe him? Yeah. Well, that's... You said you were going to get a 150. No, I said the estimate was 150. I knew I was not going to get a 150. Yeah, that's world record. That's world record? Yeah. <laughs> Holy heck! What was the previous world record? Well, it was a 140.27, but I found strats that say 7 minutes off of that. So this was a, a bad run. Oh, so that was just bad? Yeah. But you're a legend, and you yeah, got I world know. record in the DGen Dash. I know. That's insane! Yeah. Oh, well, I want to get to sleep now. It's almost three. I think we were 20 minutes behind, so you saved this. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, buddy. Good night. Good night. Should I just stop streaming now? Yeah, yeah. Alright, see ya.